In a world where darkness hides in the shadows, where demons prey on the innocent, one boy's life is forever changed by the tragedy and destiny. Welcome to Season 1 of Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba, a series where survival and vengeance walk hand in hand. Today we're diving into the tale of Tanjiro Kamado, a boy turned demon slayer, as he battles demons and fate itself to save his su sister, Nezuko who has become the very thing he's sworn to destroy. In this season, we'll follow Tanjiro's journey through loss, strength, and the unbreakable bond of family. As he battles ruthless demons and meets allies with incredible powers of their own. But make no mistake, this is no simple adventure. The deeper Tanjiro goes into the world of demon slayers, the darker and deadlier it becomes. So buckle in as we take the detailed look at Demon Slayer's first season and the events that set this epic tale into motion. We begin with Tanjiro Kamado, a kind-hearted boy living a peaceful life in the snowy mountains of Japan. As the eldest son, he helps provide for his family by selling charcoal to the nearby village. His life seems simple, surrounded by his loving mother and siblings, but in the world of Demon Slayer, peace is always fleeting. On one fateful day, Tanjiro returns home to find his entire family brutally slaughtered by a demon, leaving only his younger sister, Nezuko, clinging to life. But Nezuko isn't the same anymore. She's been transformed into a demon herself. In a world where demons are feared and hunted, Tanjiro's worst nightmare becomes a reality. His only surviving family member is now the enemy. Enter Giyu Tomioka, a powerful and cold demon slayer whose mission is clear, eradicate any demon on sight, including Nezuko. But just when Giyu is about to deliver the fa fatal blow, something unexpected expected happens. Nezuko, though a demon, protects Tanjiro instead of attacking him, showing a rare spark of humanity. Giyu, stunned by their bond, decides to spare her life and send Tanjiro on a mission to seek training from a man named Sakaonji Kurokadaki. With his family gone and Nezuko's humanity hanging by a thread, Tanjiro embarks on a journey to become a demon slayer, vowing to ca find a cure for Nezuko and to hunt down the demon responsible for his family's death. The road ahead will test his body, mind, and spirit, but Tanjiro's determination is unshakable. As Tanjiro and Nezuko travel through Mount Giri, their journey is quickly interrupted by their first real encounter with the demon. Though Tanjiro hesitates to kill, knowing what has happened to his sister, he soon learns that mercy has no place in a world overrun by demons. Only the rising sun can kill the demon he faces, and Tanjiro knows that without stronger resolve, he won't last long as a demon slave. Mount Sagairi, Tanjiro finally meets Sakaguro Kodaki, a former demon slayer who doesn't waste time sugarcoating the dangers of the job. Sakaonji warns Tanjiro of the horrifying reality if Nezuko ever kills a human, Tanjiro will have no choice but to kill her himself. With that heavy burden on his shoulders, Tanjiro begins his brutal training under Sakaonji. Climbing treacherous mountains filled with deadly traps, every failure could be his last. Tanjiro's training is relentless, filled with near-death experiences and the harsh truths of the world he stepped into. But through perseverance, he proves his worth, successfully descending Mount Sakaeri. Sakaonji, impressed by Tanjiro's potential and moved by a letter from Giyu, agrees to teach him the ways of the demon slave. It's not an easy life, but Tanjiro's resolve only grows stronger. To become a demon slayer, Tanjiro must undergo rigorous training, learning total concentration and mastering the water breathing techniques that will make him a formidable warrior. But Sakaonji's ultimate test is no cha ordinary challenge. Tanjiro must slice through a massive boulder, a task that seems downright impossible. For months, Tanjiro struggles to slice the boulder, his failures mounting day after day. Just when his hopes start to waver, two mysterious figures appear, Sabito and Makaom, former students of Sakaonji. Sabito, harsh and unforgiving, pushes Tanjiro to his limits, while 
Makaomo helps refine his technique. Together, they guide him to new heights, though there's something eerily strange about their presence. After another six months of training, Tanjiro finally succeeds in cutting the board, but as Sabato and Makaomo fade into the mist, he realizes the truth. They were spirits of fallen demon slayers, victims of a powerful demon that roams the land. With this revelation, Tanjiro is ready for his next challenge, Final Selection. The Final Selection is a deadly test where aspiring demon slayers must survive seven days in a mountain filled with demons. Only the strong will survive, and as Tanjiro enters the trial, he encounters a demon unlike any he's faced before, the grotesque Hand Demon, a monster responsible for killing many of Sakaonji's former students, including Sabato and Makaomo. The Hand Demon is powerful and cunt cunning, but Tanjiro, filled by the memories of Sabito and Makomo, fights back with everything he's learned. Using his water breathing technique, he finally slices through the demon's neck, putting the souls of its many victims to rest. In that moment, Tanjiro learns a cruel lesson. Demons, despite their cruelty, carry immense sadness and suffering. It's a burden that weighs heavily on his heart. After surviving the grueling seven days, Tanjiro emerges victorious, one of only four to make it out alive. He's officially a demon slayer, but this is only the beginning. With his new rank and black bladed sword, Tanjiro is tasked with his first mission, to investigate the mysterious disappearances of young girls in a nearby village. Tanjiro's first mission as a demon slayer is filled with sorrow and danger. In a village plagued by disappearances, Tanjiro meets Kazumi, a man grieving the loss of his fiance, Saitoko. But time is running out. The swamp demon, a creature that hunts young women, strikes again. With Nezuko by his side, Tanjiro must act quickly. The swamp demon isn't just one demon. It has three separate bodies, each capable of emerging from dark from dark, swamp-like puddles. As Tanjiro struggles to fight all three at once, Nezuko joins the fray, showing incredible strength as she protects Kazumi and the latest victim. Together, they manage to defeat the demon, but not before Tanjiro learns a crucial name. Muzan Kibasuji, a, the original demon and the one who may hold the key to cure Nezuko. Though the Swamp Demon is slain, the pain of loss remains. Tanjiro, ever compassionate, consoles Kazumi, promising that he'll continue his fight against the demons to prevent others from suffering the same fate. But this mission has only scratched the surface of the darkness that awaits. Tanjiro's journey brings him to the bustling city of Asakusa, where he senses a familiar scent, the very same one present when his family was slaughtered. Following the trail, he comes face to face with the source of all demons, Muzan Kibasuji. But Muzan isn't just any ordinary, any ordinary demon. He's walking among humans, disguised as an ordinary man with a family. In a horrifying display of power, Muzan casually turns a passerby into a demon in the middle of a crowded street, creating chaos and distraction before making his escape. Tanjiro vows to hunt down Muzan, the demon who not only killed his family, but is responsible for the creation of all demons. But Muzan is not without his own plans. He sends two powerful demons, Susamaru and Yahaba, to eliminate Tanjiro. Not all demons are enemies. Tanjiro finds unexpected allies in Tamo Tamayo and Yushiro, two demons who have managed to free themselves from Muzan's control. Together, they offer Tanjiro hope, a potential cure for Nezuko, but it requires collecting the blood of demons close to Muzan. Just as this new alliance forms, the deadly demons Susamaru and Yahaba launch their attack. The battle against Susamaru and Yahaba is intense and disorienting. Their combined powers, Suzumaru's deadly Tamari Balls and Yahaba's arrow-based blood demon art, create an onslaught that seems impossible to counter. But with help from Yushiro, who reveals Yahaba's hidden arrows, Tanjiro learns to turn the tide, using his water-breathing techniques to outmaneuver and defeat them. 
Just as the battle reaches its climax, Tamoyo cleverly tricks Suzumaru into uttering Muzan's name, which triggers a curse that violently kills her. Tamoyo reveals that both demons were not members of Muzan's elite, 12 Kizuki, but their desperation to serve him only further highlights Muzan's cruelty. Even in death, the demons are slaves to Muzan's lies. As Tanjiro continues his journey, he crosses paths with a rather unusual fellow, Demon Slayer, Zenetsu Agasuma. Let's just say Zenetsu is not your typical warrior. He's loud, cowardly, and frankly, a bit of a mess. When Tanjiro meets him, Zenetsu is busy harassing a woman to marry him, convinced that his time on Earth is running out. Despite his cowardice, Zenetsu joins Tanjiro on his next mission to a woodland mansion where a demon has been abducting children. Along the way, they meet Inosuke Hashibara, Hashibira, a boar mass demon slayer who's more eager to fight than you think. Who's more eager to fight than think. The three of them enter the mansion and are quickly separated by its shifting rooms, each facing different threats within. Inside the mansion, Tanjiro faces Kyogai, a demon who uses drums embedded in his body to control the rooms and create devastating attacks. Kyogai, once a member of Muzan's 12, Kizu, was stripped of his rank and now fights to reclaim his former glory. But Tanjiro, despite his injuries, isn't one to back down. As the battle intensifies, Tanjiro adapts to the demon's erratic drumming carefully timing his movements until he can land a final blow. In a moment of empathy, Tanjiro recognizes Kyogai's de blood demon art as a skill worthy of praise, something the demon never received in life. Kyogai's tearful end shows once again that not all demons are inherently evil, but victims of their own circumstances. With Kyogai defeated, the trio's next mission takes them to Mount Natagumo, a forest filled with eerie spiderwebs and something far more sinister lurking in the shadows. On the mountain, they find that fellow demon slayers have been turned against each other, controlled like puppets by a terrifying family of spider demons. Tanjiro and Inosuke join forces to stop the puppet controlled demon slayers, ultimately confronting the mother spider demon in a rare moment of mercy. Tanjiro offers her a painless death, freeing her from the torment she suffered under her family's control. But her last words are a warning. One of Muzan's 12, Kizuki, is on the mountain. Meanwhile, Zenetsu finds himself alone, cornered by the sun spider demon. Poisoned and terrified, Zenetsu reflects on his past, his failures, his cowardice, and his desire to make his master proud. But even in his deepest fear, Zenetsu's body moves on its own, unleashing his thunder breathing technique in a stunning display of power. In a flash of lightning, Zenetsu beheads the sun demon, proving that beneath his fearful exterior lies the heart of a true demon slayer. Even with the poison coursing through his veins, Zenetsu fights on, determined to survive. But the true threat on Mount Nat Natagumo is Rui, the son of the spider family and the member and a member of the 12 Kizuuki. Rui's power is overwhelming, his razor sharp threads capable of cutting through anything as Tanjiro struggles to protect Nezuko. Rui declares his intent to make Nezuko his sister, severing her bond with Tanjiro. Trapped by Rui's blood demon art, Tanjiro is pushed to the brink of death, but in his darkest moment he recalls the Hinokami Kagura, a powerful dance passed down by his father. Channeling this new technique, Tanjiro unleashes a devastating attack slicing through Rui's threads with the help of Nezuko's blood demon art, which ignites her blood, burning the threads away. In an awe-inspiring moment, Tanjiro beheads Rui. Their combined efforts symbolizing the unbreakable bond of family, but even in victory, the truth is revealed. Rui had beheaded himself earlier, avoiding death, as Tanjiro prepares for the worst Gi Giyu arrives to finish what Tanjiro started, eliminating Rui for good. After the battle, Tanjiro and Nezuko are brought before the Hashira, 
the strongest demon slayers in the corpse. While Tanjiro pleads his case, insisting that Nezuko has never harmed a human, the wind Hashira, Sanami, refuses to believe him, going so far as to stab Nezuko through her box. Despite Sanami's taunts, Nezuko resists the urge to attack, proving her control over her demonic instincts. With the intervention of Kagaya Ubayashiki, the leader of the de Demon Slayer Corpse, the Hashira reluctantly agreed to allow Tanjiro and Nezuko to remain within their ranks. Tanjiro's journey is far from over, but with Nezuko by his side, he's ready to face what comes next. As Season 1 draws to a close, Tanjiro, Zenetsu, and Inosuke begin their rehabilitation at the Butterfly Mansion, preparing for the next stage of their journey with new strength, new techniques, and the unwavering bond between brother and sister. Tanjiro sets his sights on the future, a future where Muzan Kibasuji is brought to justice and Nezuko's humanity is restored. Thank you for joining us on this emotional and action-packed journey through Season 1 of Demon Slayer Kimetsu no Yaiba. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more anime recaps and breakdowns. And remember, no matter how dark the world may seem, there's always a light that shines through, even in the heart of a demon.